Right, hello and welcome. Today is Thursday, May 7th. May 7th. We are near the end of our of our whole school year. We're almost done with all this distance learning stuff. Hopefully next year, by the time it's August, everything will be back to normal or some sort of modified normal. <laughs> Not sure if anything will ever be normal. Um, Today we will uh, discuss a few things about our about our circuits exam, and then we'll move forward with magnetism and the and the assignments we'll be doing from here on out. Uh, we're going to kind of wind down a bit as we uh, as we move forward. Um, yeah, things to note is that uh, you know uh, there's Labor Labor Day coming up. And then that last week of May, uh, seniors, you'll, you'll be asked to uh, turn things in, like your books and your laptops. So uh, make sure you plan accordingly and get all of your work done before then. Um, all right, so let us begin with um, with uh, circuit stuff, and then and then I'll I'll talk about due dates and other things afterwards. Um, I can go over, let's see, the most missed questions. The multiple choice seem pretty good. I'm hitting 90% in the multiple choice, except for one of the, let's see, ah oh, yes. Uh, so the most missed question, the most missed question was, um, which of the following is not a function of a battery so that was the most missed question so let's say you have a circuit and um, let's zoom in there we go so okay, here's your battery it's just a simple one battery resistor circuit So the most missed question was which is an which one of this or which of the following is not a function of the battery and um, and the answer was that the battery does not supply electrons does not supply electrons it's kind of a misconception you think like oh yeah the sure ch you know there's charges that come out and then and then it goes around and, and yeah of course the battery gives you you know, it's not it's not really that, uh, that it gives you charges. The charges are already here. They're inside. They're inside the material. So the wires have the electrons and charges. The resistors have it. They're they're all inside there. Okay. What the battery does is that it gives it a push. Okay. So imagine there's there are charges everywhere in all of your material uh, in all material. Um, but when when one uh, one of them goes out, remember at the same time, uh, there's one at the bottom side that goes in. So the net effect for the battery is is zero. There's zero gain, right? The battery isn't losing charges. Um, it it pushes one on uh, on one side, but at the same time it accepts one on the other side, right? So the net result is zero, zero amount of or zero number of charge. What changed is the is the potential energy of each charge. Of course, each charge as it goes through the resistor will will lose its electrical potential energy, which turns into heat. Um, and then and then the low energy electrons are here at the bottom side of the battery. So so that was the the most missed multiple choice question. Uh, it does not supply the charge. It gives it a push. All right. Next up are the I guess the two FRQs. Uh, let's start with this one. So I'll do both of them. So let's see. Here's one of them. Uh, uh, this is a hundred. Here's the third one.
This is 100. Uh, two, one. Uh, this one's 300. This one is, uh, oops. Oh no, that's right. 300, 300, 150. 300, 300, 150. Okay, this one's R1, R2, R3, R4. Okay, it says consider uh, the, uh, the circuit shown below. The voltage of the battery is 12.0. And, and if you take a note, right, there's a little decimal point after, after each number. What does this decimal point do? chat what is this decimal point if it's 100 dot what does that mean this decimal point is is uh, is a way to show how many sig figs this number has yes so the decimal point tells you that the zeros count and therefore it is three sig figs three sig figs so all our numbers are three sig figs Okay, so um, so we are to find all the stuff. So let's see, um, you know, all the way from V1, V2, V3, V4, V total. Now V total is actually the battery which is given, and therefore V total must be 12.0. Uh, the idea is that you want to solve this by doing one part at a time. You can't do the whole thing at once. You do one part at a time. You simplify, and then you go. From, you know, you go from there. Um, let's see, I one, I two, I three, I four, I total. Now for resistors, we want two, three, and then we want rec, and then P. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'll leave the P's for last because P is the easiest one. Once we find all the other values, then we can do P, the power. And remember, power is just IV, I times V. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and try to simplify. Well, what do we see? Well, uh, the current flow diagram will help um, draw the current flow diagram. You would draw current coming out of the positive side. And all of it now goes through resistor one, but it hits this junction here, and it splits into two parts, one, two, and then it recombines again. Uh, and then after combining, it'll go through resistor four to the bottom side of the battery. So that's our current flow diagram. And based on the fact that it, it split up at this junction here at the top, and then it you know, recombines again, these two 300s are parallel. There's a different color. Green. So these two must be parallel. Right? So because they're parallel, we can combine them using the parallel rule. Uh, so we still have R1. Now we have this green resistor, which is the combination of R23. This is R23. Actually, it's green. R23. And uh, we still have R4 down here at the bottom. This is R1, R4, and R23. So, what is R23? Well, it's the parallel combination. We can't add them, they're parallel, so we have to use the parallel rule. And that was 1 over. 1 over 300 plus 1 over 300 or do product over sum 300 times 300 over 300 plus 300 uh, which is 150 150 ohms all right on r one four uh, r4 is also 150 and r1 is 100 so that's 150 now of course uh, once you combine the parallels you can see how all three are now in series Therefore, rec has to be the sum of R1 plus R4 plus R23, which is 150 plus 150 plus 100. So that's 400.
400 is the total. That's nice. And once we have rec, we can find I total. Of course, I total is voltage over resistance, just 12 over 400. Uh, what is 12 over 400? 0 0.03, 0 0.03. 0300. We'll keep it at uh, 3 sig figs. Hence. 0 0.0300. I can't see the decimal. 0 0.0300. Yes. Okay, R23 is 150. Okay, and now we start. Um, so the next part is to you know you have to use your rules, laws, logic, everything, and see how it works and start writing um, some sets. Let's see. Uh, so using the current flow diagram. So back to our first picture, we can see how whatever current comes out of the battery. Remember, whatever comes out of the battery is your total current, I total. And that I total goes through resistor one. So one could say that the total current must be equal to the current in resistor one. At the same time, the total current, whatever comes out of the battery, must be going into the battery. Therefore, the total current is also going into the battery. And, and remember, it splits up into two parts, but eventually it recombines before going through resistor four. Therefore, the total current must be equal to the current in resistor 4 as well. So whatever goes through 1 is also going through number 4. Okay, so the total current is going through 1 and 4. So that would be over here 0 0.03. Oops, continue. 0.03 okay now to find i2 and i3 well uh, so let's take a look at this junction this orange junction okay we can use the junction rule Kirchhoff's junction rule okay there's 0 0.03 going in and then it splits up into two parts right so what is coming out Whatever's coming out has to add up to the total, meaning um, I1, which is I total, I'll just write I total, uh, I total has to equal I2 plus I3. Remember the current adds up when you have parallel resistors. Uh, and and you, can use, you can use the current splitter rule here and figure out how much current goes through each path or just use logic notice how the resistors are the same in two and three so each pathway whether you take the uh, you know resistor two pathway or the resistor three pathway uh, each pathway has the same amount of resistance therefore the the current splits up 50 50 and so using logic you can say that all well, 50% of the current goes through resistor 2 and 50% goes through resistor 3. This only happens if the resistors are the same. Otherwise you would use the current splitter rule. So let's, let's the, the current splitter rule will tell you that I2 must be equal to the opposite resistor which is R3 divided by R2 plus R3 times the total current. Okay, so that would be 300 over 300 plus 300 times 0 0.03, and again, it's still 50-50 because it's 300 over 600, which is a half of 3. All right, so half of 0 0.03 is 0 0.015. 0 0.015. Oops. Okay. So now that I have all the currents, we can just solve for all the voltages and then solve for all the power. Remember, voltage is equal to current times resistance. So V1, let me use a different color. 
v1 is equal to i1 times r1 v2 is equal to i2 times r2 and on and on and on and then once you have all the voltages then you can do all the powers power is equal to power 1 is equal to v1 times or I should start with I. I1 times V1. It doesn't matter. IV power equals IV. So P1 equals I1 V1. P2 would equal I2 V2. And if you want the total power, you use the total values. I total times V total. Okay. All right. The other one was exact. Well, the other one is actually the exact same circuit I gave you during our practice during our notes so if you took notes of course you'd remember um, in the other circuit you have uh, the battery and then on one pathway you have R1 and R2 in the other pathway you have R3 and then R4 is down here. Okay, let's do some current splitter rule. I mean, uh, current uh, flow diagram. Uh, current comes out of the battery. It hits this junction here, a fork in the road. Some of it goes through the one-two pathway. The rest goes through uh, go through the um, the R3 pathway. Eventually, recombining again, and then all of it goes through resistor four before coming back to the battery. So that's our flow diagram. Okay, we can already see how the total current goes through resistor 4. Um, so we start combining, let's see, let's start combining. Uh, okay. Now, whatever current goes through resistor 1, I1, has to go through resistor 2, therefore these two resistors notice how it doesn't split in between it just goes one after the other these two resistors are series so then you combine them uh, you have your battery the battery is how many volts uh, the battery is 16 volts 16 volts and the values are 100 300 100 300 uh, R3 is 200 R4 is 150 okay so if I redraw the circuit we have instead of R1 2 we can combine them into one resistor that has a value of R1 2 Oh man, there we go, here's our battery, doesn't look like a battery, there it is, it's 16 volts, uh, this is R12, and then we still have R3 on the other branch, oh I forgot R4, uh, there, R4, R3. R3 is still 200. R4 is still 150. Okay. But what is R12? Well, because they're series, with series resistors, you can just add them. So that's 100 plus 300, so that's 400. Okay. So if I did, uh, let's see, V, do, 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 V total is 16. I one I total. Uh, what are we supposed to sell for here? Uh, we don't want R one two. We want R one two three. Okay, R one two three is a combination of one two and three. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, now, once you combine the the first two, you can see how. These two are now parallel. Huh. 
parallel. So we can combine them into one My sister. I, I missed R4 again. Uh, sorry, R4. And this is R123. And what is R123? Well, it's a parallel of 400 and 200. So the parallel of 400 and 200. So what is that equal to? I can do some quick product over sum. 400 times 200 divided by 600 is 133. This is 133. And then the total will be the sum, because now the pink one and R4 are in series. So now we can just add the 150. So that's 283 ohms. Yeah. Okay. Next up, let's do the currents uh, based on the flow diagram first. Based on the flow diagram, we can see the total current goes through resistor 4. So let's go and state that I total is equal to the current in resistor 4. Now the total does not go through the other ones because it splits up. Uh, what is I total? Let's see. I total must be equal to V total over rec, which is 16 over 283. Uh, 16 over 283 is point, I'm going to use the original so it's like 283.3333 so somewhere around 0 0.0565 yes 565 I like that let's see if I use more let's say 16 divided by 283 uh, yeah it approaches 65 Zero five six five, and therefore number four is also. Uh, we just have to do I two and I three and then one. Now I one and I two uh, I two or resistor one and resistor two are series, and we know that for series circuits or series resistors, they have the same current. Now it's not equal to the total, but with each uh, amongst each other, they share the series rules or the series uh, current rules. So within this portion of the circuit, the the series rule still applies. Um, so as soon as I find one, I can find the other. Um, and it just so happens it's actually the same as the current in Y one two. Okay, so let's take a look here at the second picture of the first one. The second one combines R1 and 2 together. So now we can see how it splits up into two parts. Okay, into two parts. So some of it goes to the 400 and the rest goes to the 200. And, then, and that's that. So using the current splitter rule, I12 must be equal to the opposite branch. The opposite branch is R3 divided by the sum of the two branches R12 plus R3 times times whatever is coming in which is the total. So this would be 200 over the 400 plus the 200 times the total, the total is 0 0.0565. Okay. Uh, or, you know, again, you can use logic. The logic is that uh, if you take a look, okay, there's a, there's a correlation or relationship between the two resistors. Okay. So the first resistor, the green one, is 400. Whereas the, uh, the R3, the other resistor, is 200. Okay? The current takes the path of least resistance, which means that the, the path that has less resistance will receive more of the current, uh, uh, current 
a bigger portion of it and the path that has more resistance, the 400, will receive less of the current. But then you look at the actual relationship or like the ratio and notice how you have double the resistance in R12. If you have twice as much resistance, you're going to get half as much current. So, so when you split it up, it's kind of like a one-third, two-thirds split, right? Well, two-thirds is twice as much as one-third. So it splits up into two-thirds and one-third, and, and the bigger resistor will get the one-third, and or the, uh, the, the resistor has double the resistance, will get the one-third, and then the resistor with the half resistance will get the two-thirds. All right, anyway, or just use current splitter rule. Uh, 200 over 600, that's uh, one third. One third of the total current. So 0.0565 over three, and that's 0 0.0188. Okay, so it's 0 0.0188, 0 0.0188. And we just have to find I3. Uh, we could use the current splitter rule again. We can see that it's two thirds, or or just subtract it. Notice how. Um, take a look at this junction rule. Um, at this junction here. Okay, we have 0 0.0565 going into the junction. Okay, we have 0 0.0188 coming out one way, so whatever's left over must be going the other way. So, so you can subtract, um, you can subtract the uh, the uh, the amount that you found 0 0.188 from the original, and you can find the leftover. Okay, let me just uh, multiply this by two, and so the leftover must be. 0 0.037 it's like 666 six, six. okay so I'll just round to 7 somewhere around there so I3 has to be 0 0.0377 all right so we have all the current you can find all the voltages and now and, and all the power remember V1 is equal to I1 R1 etc and if you want to do power power is equal to I1 V1 All right, so that's the end of circuits. Cool. Okay, let me pull up uh, what we're going to do. Um, we will, let's see. So if you click on today's Canvas page, let me pull up Canvas. Right, boom. So here's 5.7 and it tells you that uh, you need to go to this website, which is Seneca Learning. It's like a virtual classroom type, you know, your own pace. If you used, um, uh, shoot, what is that program called? Uh, I know this, the foreign language or the world language department uses it. Um, it's with their PowerPoints and I forget. Chat, if you guys are in foreign language, there's this, uh, there's this program they use to make their kind of like their PowerPoints and stuff interactive where you uh, answer questions and stuff in the PowerPoint. If you know what it is, type it in chat. I forget what it is. Anyway, uh, click on this link um, and our, our class code is it, class code is this number thing or whatever this thing is. But if you actually click on this link, it'll take you to near. No, it's not near pod. Um, it's something else. Basically, it modifies like regular PowerPoints, and they're able to add like little tiny slides. But the slides can have, um, you know, a fill in the blank or match or some sort of activity type thing. Peer deck. That's it. Good job, Dennis. Let's give Dennis a wireless high five. Good job. <laughs> I need to make a wireless high five emote so we can use it. Uh, it's like Peer Deck, that's what it is. Or Pear Deck. Uh, so, 
so so you have five assignments five assignments uh, one of them is a full you know magnetism unit and then I've also opened up a couple more to to go over you know everything <laughs> Uh, now the due dates are here, but please don't don't try to do all of this in one day. Obviously, you want to pace yourself. They're they're all open, um, and especially seniors, right? Some of these some of these might be difficult, um, so you will need to you'll need to get them done sooner rather than later because you'll be asked to um, turn in your turn in your things, turn in your laptops and stuff. Um, so seniors get it done ASAP. Juniors, you guys have more time. Um, but you know it's basically at your own pace. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. Once you go there, you would have to sign up. Um, I already actually have a bunch of students who've signed up already. Good job, whoever signed up. Um, and and so it looks something like this. You can you can see the entire thing, but cl uh, click on your assignments, assignments, uh, and you can you can see your assignments. There are five of them. Um, magnetism. I'm gonna skip that. Let's go to mechanics. All right, I like mechanics, uh, but you'll have to you know do all of them, uh, and then click start learning. So the idea is that it uh, you know it gives you some notes. Or some reading you have to read it um, you know don't uh, you know first uh, go through all the slides so notice how it has little tiny circles here at the bottom one two three four five so this section has five slides click on the the arrow to go through all the slides first don't hit continue uh, you want to hit continue after you finish the slides now of course you can go back and forth so don't worry if you hit forward you can always go backwards uh, so it says mass is a scalar, mass describes how much of uh, something there is, blah blah blah. And then you read all this stuff. Oh, speed, velocity, oh man, look at all the good old the good old days of Vovat. Uh, and then and then once you're done with the slides, then you would hit continue. And basically it forces you to like answer some questions. Right? So based on your reading, you should be able to so if you if you if you don't know. You know, you know, just scroll up a little bit, and you can actually find the answers in the slides. So if you actually read it, uh, or if you if you remember it, that's great. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, of course, you, you, Chris. Uh, you don't you don't have to ask me. You can always do that. Uh, which of the following is a scalar quantity? Is a scalar quantity. So speed versus velocity. We know velocity has a direction. So if you just remember things, uh, this will this will be a breeze. Uh, speed is a scalar, velocity is a vector. Uh, di uh, distance is a scalar, displacement is a vector. Uh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, I I think I'm still the same person. <laughs> maybe I sound different because my microphone is in a different position. And then uh, mass is a scalar. That's actually literally on the first. Uh, it's literally the first thing on the first slide. Mass is a scalar. Um, so there you go. Um, the answer is correct. Yay. Which of the following is not an example of a vector quantity? Acceleration is a vector. Displacement is a vector. Weight. Weight. Chat, what is weight? Well, weight is the force of gravity. Remember, weight is the force of gravity on you. We can find your weight by m times g. mg is weight. Um, and therefore, mass. I mean, or look at it. Mass is a scalar, definitely not a vector. <laughs> so, mass. Yeah. So, some of it is like really simple. This is literally easy high school physics. So would Seneca serve as a review for? Definitely. Uh, so see, see how you have um, finals review one. It goes through mechanics, so all of the mechanic stuff. There's even a little like a practice exam. So at the end, you can take like a practice test. Uh, finals review two uh, has energy stuff, work energy. Um, number three has uh, fields, electric fields, and and waves shim, shim uh, 
uh, all the wave stuff that we did. And finally, number four has electro electrostatics and circuits. So it's a full course review there, including the actual unit for magnetism. So start with magnetism first. Um, get through that. Right. Uh, get through the magnetism stuff, and then and then it's finals review. Okay. Um, uh, we will not. Our, our schedule is changing based on what I just learned yesterday in our meetings. Right, because we're we're collecting all the things, especially for seniors, starting uh, on the uh, the Labor Day week week thing, or actually after Labor Day. So the week of the twenty fifth, technically twenty fifth is no school, but you know it seems like every day is a no school. Uh, but the week of the twenty fifth, we'll start collecting things. Therefore, we can't really do our finals on finals day. So I will have. Well, uh, I will actually use some of the uh, the score like I'll use the part like the score that the scores you're getting from Seneca uh, as a as a as part of your final grade so this I mean this is this makes it really simple <laughs> it's almost like it's basically an open note final here so please don't just rush this thing take your time try to do try to do this correctly and um, but pace yourself don't you know just because you saw the due date on canvas don't try to log in on on the 25th and try to get all of this done you know pace yourself every day you want to do a couple of a couple of them um, so that so that you can actually finish all of them right all right so so start with your Seneca learning um, if you have, uh, we will not have, we will not have like a, we will not have like a test on during finals, finals week. Finals week is actually more like Q and A week. Uh, it's when I will be, you know, finishing up grades and then I'll be putting up grades, etc. Uh, uh, so there, there will not be anything new. Uh, there, so no other new assignments um, besides besides these these things so no there are no other new assignments no other new assignments okay. all right um, I suppose that's it so please get started um, you need to make an account when you make your account uh, make sure you use your full legal uh, full legal name as it appears on on, on your Aries and then make sure you use your school ID so use school ID to create your account and make sure you use your full legal name um, and, and, and then get started on, on the uh, magnetism unit all right um, and and so on streams I'll just show you a couple of demos and stuff it'll be less uh, less of me like full lecture uh, I think People just got tired of the full lecture stuff. <laughs> it it started off well. We had lots of people tuning in, and then it just dwindled down. Sad days. But I think um, I think learning through Seneca will be will be good in that you can kind of control your pacing. It'll check for understandings um, for 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 every you know every few slides. Um, you're tired of your life. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we're we're done, Chris. So uh, after you finish this, physics is over. Uh, you know you can enjoy your summer and best of luck. All right, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.